Okie doke. So yeah, I'm going to um, start up with the initial setups and I guess kind of like my reasoning for um, how I'm going about doing it. But I was uh, on my own. Unfortunately, I went to go use the camcorder, but I've got to um, fix the setup a bit more. So this is still not exactly the way I'm going to go. But thankfully, at least I can do um, I can do an overhead and uh, not 0 0.5 zoom, and I can go. I'll, I'll go in in a minute. But I um, just wanted to leave it at, at, at this for now. Um, I remember last week when I was discussing about uh, the turn length and saying that um, I was surprised that it's so many turns, the 30 turns. And when I was thinking about it, like I said yet again about the initial setups and um, trying to figure out and um, the pacing as well because of the 30 turns. And then I realized, and then I looked at the dates for the turns that they're using, that they start off on... Um, the 17th of August and then end on the 15th of September and each turn is one day long. Uh, it just occurred to me, it was like, wait a minute, what they've done here rather, and remember you also do get some uh, variant scenarios, the, um, the stronger eighth army one, the stronger second army one. Um, uh, uh, maybe I should um, be speci uh, specific here. Uh, the stronger German eighth army or a stronger uh, Russian Second Army, and there's also um, another one with the better Russian cavalry. So there's three variant scenarios that you can do as well. Um, it it occurred to me. I was like, wait a minute. What they've done is they've baked in the uh, the stuff that um, was the basically the prelude to. Uh, the Battle of Tannenberg, the actual Battle of Tannenberg, which just involved the Russian Second Army, not the Russian First. And then uh, the subsequent um, First Battle of the Masurian Lakes. That's what they've done here. Um, so in a weird way, I was thinking, wait a minute. Um, with a three-page rule book, they've given uh, given the, the person or the people playing, um, kind of like in a weird way, a mini campaign. Uh, 30 turns and if I start viewing that viewing it that way with the pacing I can start going okay um, yeah it makes sense it's kind of neat to see that okay like from the certain dates okay that's the you know the battle of uh, Stalopunin and Gumbinin and stuff like that which led to uh, you know uh, how uh, things developed with the Russia against the Russian second army and so on and so forth so it's I just think that's really neat all right, so the first uh, people to set up are the Germans, then it's going to be obviously the Russians, and then the Russians move first. Um, if I were, I'll maybe go over a couple of things again, just to make sure, and then um, I'll start setting up. So the F Germans are allowed to set up anywhere in East Prussia, except they cannot... Well, you can't obviously go in the lakes and stuff like that. And you cannot also, um, you cannot be on a hex with a, a border hex. Uh, what else? Uh, things to consider. Um, the victory conditions. I think I've mentioned before, I find this game extremely well balanced that both sides are fighting for a minor victory. And bonus points if you get the if you get the major victory, which I think is uh, very difficult to do. Um, but with thirty turns and looking at it from a campaign standpoint, maybe. Um, and when I see it from there, I and yet again when I was saying I find these rules so uh, they just facilitate um, house ruling in a sense and i can uh, already i'm like oh my goodness could you ever add some complexity to this like a bit of supply a bit more of a you know a logistical uh issue and whatnot but anyways the supply you have to uh remember uh units um not in supply uh move one uh hex less i'm just gonna make sure we check that again um Units which are unsupplied have one subtracted from their movement factor and attack at one half strength. And then we'll, uh, I'm just going to, we'll go over the victory conditions yet again, just to make sure. The Russians achieve a major victory if no supplied German units remain on the map east of the Vistula. 
So this thing way over here. So let's you know, slide it over a bit. There we go. So this thing here. So that's, you know, that's a lot of territory. I mean, come on, give me a break. Um, on the map east of the Vistula or outside of Konigsberg. So way over there. Well, I'll slide it over. I guess I don't really have to all that much, do I? Okay, so there we go. Um, what else is, do I want to uh, mention? Oh, yeah, the minor victory would be if they have blocked all rail lines between Konigsberg and the West Edge. So there's only, a, you know, a couple really, but they can still, I mean, you can get finicky, I guess, but you get the idea. And... Uh, or have more divisions, and that's what it's always come down to for me, um, or equivalent inside East Prussia than the Germans. The, and that's the kicker. It's the divisions. So it's, um, and remember, two brigades equals one division in this, and there's no stacking except for uh, brigades into a division. You can temporarily stack, I think, at one point, but you have to, uh, here, we'll go quickly to stacking again. Um, I just saw it. Where did I see you, you little? Hold on here. Stacking. No. Oh yeah. Sorry, I forgot about the German uh, victory condition. So the Germans achieve a major victory if no supplied Russian units remain inside East Prussia, and for East uh, for the Russians for their supply, um, uh, for the first six six turns uh, game turns russian units must be within six hexes of a russian rail line that leads unobstructed to the east or south edges and then beginning beginning on the seventh turn onwards it's um just the east or south edges um and they don't ha uh, still has to be to a rail line but um you don't have to be six hexes out from it is what they're saying you can be way the heck out there as long as you can trace yourself back to an active rail line you should be okay and the other thing to uh thing which is wonderful uh when we start uh, discussing the german setup is the fact that um the russian cavalry will be hampered uh every time they run into a um rail line on the german side because of the landstrom that little mechanic that every so every time so yet again at the outbreak of the war the germans organized their landstrom third line reservists into a sort of into a sort of local militia operating in groups of, of from 50 to 250 men. They were entrusted with guarding the rail lines while they could offer little resistance to Russian infantry. They proved effective in inhibiting the advance of the cavalry. Whenever a Russian cavalry um, unit enters a hex containing a German rail line, it must stop and move no further that phase. This restriction applies only during the Russian movement phase and has no effect on retreats. All right, uh, what else did I want to say about... Oh, yeah, it was the stacking. No more than one division or its equivalent may be stacked in a single hex at the end of a movement phase. For purposes of equivalency, two brigades or regiments equal a division. Uh, if no other route is available... And I'm wondering if this is because they were going to... You see regiment there? I'm wondering if that was because they were using this rule system for their other uh, games as well. So it was a base rule system. I don't know uh, the uh, the Battle of Mudden or Mullen or something, uh, the Russo-Japanese War, and then uh, Kaiserslaut, and they also wanted to do uh, Sarajevo, which they never got around to. Uh, the overstacked units, those forced into the hex, are placed under the original units in the hex. Uh, while overstacked, they may not attack and may not contribute to the defense of the hex if attacked. This is due to a retreat in the combat results table. Sorry, I should have mentioned that. They do suffer uh, any combat results against it, however. At their first opportunity, the oper owning player must relieve, uh, relieve the overstacked situation. All right. Oh, yeah, I should turn on the light. Hold on. I'm not allowed. Oh, I have to go to um, one. There we go. And I think I'm now I'm allowed to go to the. There we go. Oh, how's that help? I think I'm just trying to get rid of these shadows, and uh, we'll see if um, that helps. I don't know. 
like I said, I'll, I'll look at it later. And if I go, well, maybe actually this should be better for the playthrough. We'll do, we'll do the, uh, hold on, I'll have to turn off the lights, sorry. And then we'll go down to, actually, I don't have to go to 0.5. I can go to maybe 0.7 or something. And uh, hold on. There I'm at 0.7. Let's see if that, uh, that should, it's not too, too bad. Or well, maybe I should go to point. Sorry about this. Um, I'm trying to, maybe 0.6. Yes. Okay. There. So that's not too bad. You, see, you more or less see the whole map. I don't have to move around. I think this is good for that strategy type initial placement thing. Yeah. All right, so that's it. I'm going to, and so for the Germans, what I'm going to do essentially is, um, uh, which I've never done, I'm going to try the historical approach and try to put a, um, a thin line up here to try to stop the first arm, slow them down, and then uh, put a, an extremely strong force down here. But I am going to use these little fortification areas excuse me, to um, uh, put my uh, small units, uh, small strength point units there. Um, my main concerns uh, for the Germans, uh, what I'm worried about is the, their cavalry getting around my flanks and spreading out all over the place and causing me havoc. As well, uh, the second thing, oh, there's three things. That, the second thing is for the Russians to have a concentrated force somewhere where they start to really hunker down and it's going to be hard for me to push them out. And it's also causing me to put a lot of uh, forces that way. Uh, and third is what I call the land of a hundred fires um, where there's just like a, they're all over the flipping place and it's so hard for me to get rid of them. And yet again, like I was saying with the, if part of the, um, you know, the victory conditions for the Russians is to just have more divisions on the board. In other words, more counters than the Germans in the end in East Prussia. Well, you know, that's not too good. So, and if it, or is it supply? Let's see here. Yep, supplied. So it's supplied. That's going to be key. And 30 turns. This is going to be nice to uh, think about it that way. I've never uh, viewed it that way, like I said, about uh, looking at it like a, a mini campaign. So there we go. I'm going to put the um, my little... Um, the little German guys over um, here. I don't have very many up up at the front. I've just got um, got two brigades, and then um, um, all my essentially, I think all my reserve divisions are up here. There's one biggie, the first reserve, and then I've got the cavalry, which was also up there historically. And I'll put the cavalry way up towards the flank, and uh, that'll be that. Oh, so hold on, um, I can't really see what you're seeing anymore. So I just got to hope I don't touch the extender so um and i'm allowed to go anywhere around there but i don't want to get uh oh he's got five uh movement points and i've got to remember too i've uh, like i think i've mentioned before in a previous game that i played i was extremely aggressive with the germans and um they swarmed me here the russians and i just got eaten alive i didn't have enough eventually and yeah you want to talk about uh they had a combination of hunker down with concentrated forces and being able to send out the land of a hundred fires. So I was just like, oh man, this sucks. So, um, but I obviously want to, you know, enjoy the, um, um, hanging out in the woods. So it'll be hard for them to, you know, force me to retreat. And also the enemy zones of control cavalry, uh, also exert, uh, enemy zones of control in this game, which will, um, you know, slow them down. So, um, yeah. I'll put you here. I'm allowed to. Where should I put you over in the river? Hmm. Yeah. Why not? Let's try something interesting. All right. Because I think I'm allowed to. No, I'm not. To, I don't think I, there's a retreat before cavalry. Although they proved somewhat more useful on the eastern front than on the western. Cavalry units were still rather useless against infantry. To reflect this, whenever cavalry units attack a hex containing infantry units, their combat strengths are halved. Also, whenever a cavalry unit is faced with an attack by infantry units alone, it may, attack, it may elect to retreat before combat. Okay. And the owning player simply retreats the cavalry unit to hexes under the restrictions given in, in combat for retreats. Okay. 
So I'll leave it there and try to exert a, 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 an enemy zone of control. And yet again, I don't want to get a bit too uh, too aggressive, but I don't want to get too conservative, and then they can start doing whatever the heck they want to do. Uh, as far as I know, towns don't uh, do anything, uh, cost enter the hex, rail town, see Landstrom, nope, no combat effects, so it's just a nice looking thing to see, uh, to see, um, so what do I want to put there, I think I'm going to put someone right in the middle, nice and strong, um, not that close, maybe near the river, yeah, Okay, um, and yet again with the zones of control and the slowing down stuff, I'm going to put one there in that town. And I would like to have um, a bit of support. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'll put them there. Okay, and another. What was that? All right, we'll see. It's not much, but I'll try to fall back if I need to. Um, I have no idea, of course, where the Russians are going to show up. So we're, we're there. And then the rest of the guys are going to go down here. And I've got a bunch of them. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six divisions that are 20 strength points with a three movement factor. And no Russians do. Um, so that's just wonderful. But we're going to put my rinky-dink... Um, guys um just to protect some spots so we'll put that guy here um and remember i'm allowed to stack with the brigades here so we'll do that uh huh um do i want to put someone way the heck down in thorn here with that fortress that's interesting Okay, let's do that. Let's do that. Let's see what happens there. So, I, can you guys see that? Yes, you can. Just off to the side. All right. Yeah. So that's Thorn with the uh, the um. Uh, hold on. Not the ring forts. There's two different kinds of forts. Remember? Hold on here. Fortifications. Uh, there's the detached forts and the ring forts. Uh, the detached forts represent permanent concrete and steel works with intrinsic garrisons. Oh, yeah, they're uh, right in the middle. Um, and so this is a ring fort, part of an interlocking defense mechanism. So that's going to be hard for them to, to take them out. So I'll leave them there. Okay, and then we've got something I can, uh, just in case the Russians start doing something interesting that way. Okay. Um, but this is my main focus. I want to not even have to have something there because I want to just go mental. Uh, all right. So we're going to put a lot of people, I think, actually very close, close to that spot. Yep. That's what we're going to do. And we'll see what, we'll see how they react. But I also want to put them on rail areas because I can zip them off. I don't know if you remember about the rail. So the, the thin lines are the single track and, um, Germans are only allowed to use rail in their territory and single track rail allows the Germans to do one division or two brigades stacked in one direction uh, only. I wonder if you can do one brigade then b b back and forth because it would be technically hmm, interesting uh, uh, or uh, a double rail line, the thick ones here. Um, you could do two divisions, uh, in one direction only, or, um, two divisions, you know, in either direction kind of thing. So uh, I, w I would like to also keep them on there. I also have to remember that the Russians, we know where the Russians are coming from. They're, uh, they're restricted to certain areas from here. So I know they can't be way the heck over here right off the bat. So as long as I can jam the door here somehow right off the bat and then, we can squeeze them on in. Hopefully that's the way I'm looking at it. They can't get here right away. They can get there pretty darn quick because they move first. That's the bloody bummer. Um, so I have to figure out, is there some way I can also put some guys maybe here so when the cavalry are, I mean, they've got lots of cavalry. 
Um, yep, the second army's got three three divisions of cavalry, so uh, I know they're gonna most likely come this way. Not that worried about them here. Uh, sorry about the jerk. Uh, I just nailed the table. What are they gonna do there for crying out loud? You've got this brick wall, oh, a giant water wall, and I've got some uh, detached forts here, there, right around Lotson and stuff. Um, so yeah, um, I'm not that that worried. Uh, I'm gonna put a Hmm. I'll put a guy here. And just, I don't know. Yeah, like I said, I want to jam them home. I want to nail these guys to the cross. Um, yeah, well, I'm not allowed to go on a, on a border hex. Damn you. Um, and I don't want to get, okay, that's a rail line. That's good. I'll leave you there. Or uh, maybe here. Yeah, I think there. Yeah, that's a bit too, because that way I can see if they're going to move right right away. Um, then I've got a bunch more left, which is just flipping wonderful. So let's get back onto these rail lines, everybody. Didn't I? Yeah, let's. Yeah, let's. No. Reason? Um, because I want to. Um, I don't I want to keep them on a rail and still somewhere if I need to. I know, yes, single tracks, but at least I've got the option of moving one of them if I need to. That's the way I'm looking at. Yeah, yet again, I don't want to worry, but I do want to have something that I can nail them to the cross with. Like I said, if we can do this nice little jam on the second army, I'm happy. So uh hmm. I don't want to get too far out again. That's what I'm worried about. Uh, hmm. I'm going to move a factor of three. Yeah, let's keep it here then. Let's see. Uh, I need you there. I'm allowed to have you there. Okay. Ooh, I like that. Uh, how about that? All right. Let's see. So that's it for the Germans. So now that... Uh, the Germans have done what they've done um, because it's the Russian turn um, and none of the Russian units are adjacent to a German unit. Um, all the German units become uh, what they call inverted. So I'm going to do that because that's the way we're going to play. Um, and the thing is for the... Oops, sorry. Um, oh, I can hit pause. You don't have to see this. Hold on. All right, so there we go. It always looks like so much scarier when you, um, at least for me, when I can't see what the heck I'm, I'm about to face. That's what I love about uh, blind games, in a sense. Um, so, yeah, I was talking about um, the inverted. That's what they call it here, um, uninverted and inverted. Um, so the Russians always remain uninverted on uh, the German side of the border. They behave like Germans, in a sense, when they get on their side. So as long as they're not uh, adjacent to a German unit uh, on the Russian side, they can uh, invert if they wish. Um, I love it. It just seems great for the reconnaissance bit. So yet again, for the uh, we'll do the setup for the second army. First, since they're right, right close and there's hardly any of them. Um, the second army... Um, must be deployed south of the above hex row. So it's this one here. They're not allowed to go above this one here. Augustavo uh, Woods here. Or the, the town, but in that uh, area is like the... Uh, anyways, uh, you'll find out soon enough in... Whatever. Um, so they're, uh, they have to be uh, south. Um, and they have to be on the town or adjacent to uh, Ostrolenka. Lomza. And Oswick. So bing, bing, and bing. That's where they have to be. So as the second, as the Russians, what I usually try to do, and this is the beauty of it, is you know you're going to get a lot of reinforcements. Um, they don't have, they're not, you're not forced to send them uh, to either army. So all bets are off after, you know, whatever, once they start coming in. So if I notice, I mean, obviously there's entry points for them, but um, 
I can start streaming them off here, there, and everywhere if I need to. The, the problem is, is the slow movement uh, pace and can't use rail. Got lots of cavalry though, and that's the kicker. Uh, to try to... Oh, gosh, this game is just a dandy, man. For three pages? Come on. Uh, also on a side note, I know I'm talking about the playthrough here, but you know what? Uh, I'm finding, like I said, this game I find very well balanced. You can play it easily within four hours. Hint, hint, time slot for mo most conventions. Can Games is coming up. I find this game uh, three page rules. You're not going to be spending an hour and a half. At least I won't be spending hopefully an hour and a half trying to explain the rules to someone. So it should be relatively fast and, and accessible. Um, and I'm contributing to Hex Encounter Wargaming at a convention, which seems to be on the wane. So I'd love to see it, you know, bumped up a bit. So I, I'm seriously considering that. Uh, I would love to do that. Um, anyways, and I get my World War One kick, which is just lovely. So here we go with the Second Army. This is all we have. Uh, not a heck of a lot. It's the three um, cavalry units, which are allowed to be... Remember, I think it was... I screwed up before. I thought it was... Uh, uh, what did it say? Um, the uh, the cavalry can go eight hexes from Osterlenka, and you darn right I'm doing that. So that's eight, eh? So here, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And just like um, the Germans, you're not allowed to. Uh, the Russians are not allowed to be on a border hex. So here we go. Um, where was I? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So how I play the Russians basically is what I'm trying to do with the I'm trying to outflank with the cavalry. Uh yes, you're darn right I'm playing the land of a hundred um fires. And if if the if the Germans want to gift gift me a spot where I can keep pouring in troops nice and nice and easy peasy and, and having them um concentrate mo most of their combat that way to try to wedge me out of East Prussia, all the power to them. Um, but I would, I've never tried. I would like to see if I can maybe, since there's 30 turns, I'm wondering if I can cause a little grief, like a little diversion somewhere here in the actual Missouri and Lakes area. It'd be interesting to see. Um, so there we go. I've got one cavalry unit there. Um, oh yeah, I remember we, we move first, so that, which is just wonderful. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The thing is, once we start hitting uh, these flipping rail lines, it's going to suck. So what I try to do is, obviously, I try to get as far away as possible this way. And I can automatically see already the Germans have left me in a beautiful, nice little hole. And um, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try as much as possible. I... I I'll put a, uh, I've got two more. I've got one more cavalry unit uh, left. Oh, darn it! Um, I've only got one, two, three, four um, divisions. Uh huh. So what I'm gonna do, I think. Shit. Okay, I've got to be adjacent, or so no choice. Uh, the two movement factor. It just sucks. Um. But I'm allowed to go to Oswick. I do believe that was the Australenka, Lamza, and Oswick. Yeah, that's the thing. You just got to realize that the um, it's going to take you a long time to get there, and this is not the Battle of Tannenberg. It's the it's the prelude for me, Chris. Okay, okay then. So, uh, which way do I want to go? Do I want to put put? Uh, God Almighty, why do I want? No, I want to concentrate my force. Um, Hmm. But then I'm worried about them cutting off my line of supply. Hmm. I'm going to stay in Lomza. And we'll see what... Uh... But I move first. Okay, so I can already go that way. So, yeah, let's try here. And we'll try to... Keep... Okay. Okay. So I'm going to do a two-pronged or whatever. I'm going to try to stick stick this way. And then I'll keep my cavalry, and I'm allowed eight. Eight, did they say, from Ostrolanka? 
Yeah, so it's just from there. Okay, then. So that's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm good with that. Um, yep. Okay, so that's the, uh, the Russian second army. And as you can see, um, a heck of a lot more. Um, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six uh, cavalry divisions. That's just wonderful. And um, a whole heck of a lot of stuff. Not the greatest strength points in the world and not the greatest movement points in the world. But I can tell you one thing. The first army has a heck of a lot of a nicer world than I think than the second army does. I don't know about you guys, but... Uh, you know, here, I'll push it over a bit. It's a bit more. There we go. Um, you know what I mean? Like, so now where do they, they're allowed to, the first army is allowed to start anywhere on or north of the Augustovo line here. And uh, yet again, like I said, they're not allowed to go on the um, the border bits. So here we go. I can't believe I ta I'm taking 31 minutes to do this. I thought it was going to be like a four minute video. I swear to God. Um, so I don't see a heck of a lot up there. So what I'm going to try to do is yet again, I'm going to see if I can put a fair amount of cavalry here, push as fast as I can this way to get around. I'll put some people here to slow them down. But I would love to be able to link up somehow with these guys here. I don't know how to do it exactly yet, but we'll give it a shot. And I'm allowed to go anywhere in that spot. Let's take one more look so I don't so I don't screw up here. Um, where are you, page three? There we are. German player may deploy the following. Oh, sorry, uh, the Russian player deploys first. The first group is deployed on or north of the Hexero of the Augustavo uh, row, they may not be deployed on border hexes. Okay. All right. So here we go, which is a lot less restrictive than the uh, the first army, I can tell you that much. So here we go. And we get the move first. I'm not doing the move um, today, but we are going to rock and roll. I can tell you that much. We are going to rock and roll. All right. Okay, guys, I want you to do some amazing work. I've never had either side get a major victory. The Russians have come close, that's for sure. I'm going to put you in the middle. I think you're just this little independent unit. And we'll let you play around in the Masurian Lakes. Yep, makes sense to me. And the 5th Rifles, same thing. You're going to go and... I'm not sure about this half. I think you're allowed to. Yeah, makes sense. Okay, so we'll put you there then. And you can go... Here. And I've got a bunch more cavalry. This is just wonderful. And put you here. And so here. I have no idea what's over there, obviously. And we'll see. I think that's how I'm going to go. Yet again, am I uh, spreading the love too much? We'll see. Um, Probably am. Mm. Oh well, so that's that. Hopefully you can see what uh, what I've done. Um, I'll zip on over a little bit there. Um, so yeah, the second army are going to try, like I said, to out uh, outflank with the cavalry here. Maybe a little bit of a see what's going on with the Germans here, and hopefully they don't cut off the lines to supply. Try to do some kind of link up with the first army here through the Masurian Lakes. That little bit here. The uh, cavalry can try to help out here, and that's why I put in the weak units here. They can kind of like meander in here, uh, hopefully. And then the the big force is these guys here that will try to go uh, south of the Reminter uh, Hyde towards Goldat that way. And then these guys are just going to be kind of like, um, you know, 
opportunistic whatever if it works it works and then we just got to wait for the reinforcements which will be coming on turn three all right i hope that went well uh for everyone and uh see you next sunday